Some members from the iForge has asked me how to use these sub-agents inside of Cloud Code and what are they useful for. I believe the fastest way to understand this is just directly using it. So let me head over to my cursor IDE. And now instead of going over to Ubuntu and opening up the project, you could just select this, go over to Git Bash and run Cloud Code in here. So no, it's not Cloud, it's Cloud. Now with Cloud open, you can type in slash agents, hit enter, hit enter to create a new agent. And now in here, you can either decide if you want to create an agent for this specific project, or if you want to create a personal agent that works inside of your computer. For this specific example, I'll create a personal one because I'll build a way for it to always understand how I want my Next.js projects to be created. Because usually every time I ask it to create a Next.js app, it just goes with uh, not the recent version, but like the 14.4, I believe. I always prefer to use the latest version. And that's why most of the time I just go with actually typing all these commands on my own. I think it's even more reliable to just type out these commands, but there are some configurations that you have to make inside of the project sometimes. So for example, if you want some specific pages or routes to be authenticated, you'll have to actually go inside of the code and type those specific commands. And I am only mentioning this because in in my example, there's a lot of different commands that you can just use to get a project running. And if it's your case where you only have commands to run, then you're better off just using hooks just because they'll spend much less of your quad codes context window. So yeah, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let me hit personal and then generate with Claude. And now is where I'll describe exactly what I want. I already have this noted down in my notepad and my prompt is basically, this agent should be an expert in creating fresh new Next.js project. Every time I ask for a new Next.js project, it should always create one with ShadCN, Prisma configuration, TypeScript, and always use the latest stable version, as well as Lucid icons. It should also create a .env.example file containing these lines. And then I specify which lines I want it to create it with. So again, this is an example and I can specify a whole lot of things here. So for example, include authentication, include Stripe payment system, and specifically tell it how those should be created. Just be careful to not give it so much instructions, like each agent should have its own responsibilities. So you could have a specific agent to create the authentication, you could have another agent to create all the payment system. At the end of the day, it's like these agents have specific set of instructions that you'll see in just a bit, which helps them perform a specific task every time they are demanded. So let me copy this prompt, paste it in there, hit enter, and wait for it to create the agent. It should be pretty fast. And actually now I have to select the tools. So depending on the agent, it'll have access to a specific set of tools. For this agent, it will probably never use MCP, but if you are creating an agent that, let's say, uses Firecrawl, for example, uses a specific uh, scraping mechanism inside of it, then you would continue to use MCP and other tools. I'll just check this off because my agent won't use that. And there are specific like individual tools that you can also toggle. So read, edit, multi-edit, write, note, book, read. Let's leave those on and hit continue. Then you can select a color for your agent. And this is pretty interesting because every time your Claude code agent recognizes that it needs to use that specific agent, then it will have this color highlighted and you'll know that the agent is being used. So for my case, I'll just choose green and hit enter once again to build the agent. Nice, so the agent was just created. You can control click, find it. And this is the markdown file containing that specific agent. So all the agent really is, is a set of instructions. And what your main agent has access to, so let me draw this in ScollyDraw just because I like drawing it out. Basically, every time you're using the agent, and this is like the main agent, every time you talk to Cloud Code, it will have a really small context here every time you send it a message. This small context is basically the description. And the description is this right here. So use this agent when the user requests a new Next.js project. By this, I don't have to type a specific keyword or something. Every time the agent understands that it needs to create a new project that is related to Next.js, it will use this specific agent to understand all the instructions that I asked it to. It knows all the tools that it has access to, the color green, and then the instruction. So instead of every time that you do a specific feature, be it creating a new project, be it revising the code or really any other instruction that would benefit from a good context, which leads to a big prompt could benefit from having an agent. Because now what's different is that anywhere inside of my computer that I spin up 
a new project, I can just type in, please create a new Next.js project. And I don't need to specify all those things that it needs to create. It just will understand that it needs to use that specific agent. We'll use the agent and we'll build like I need it to. So I'll create a new Next.js project and you see that green label right there using the specialized Next.js project creator agent. It asked for a name for that project, so name it project example. And while that's loading, let me talk a bit about when you're going to create this inside of your own project. When you create this inside of your own project, by the way, you'll have an agent right here. Like you'll have a folder that is named agent and inside of that folder you'll have the specific agent so blah blah, blah uh, dot md this will be an agent that is used inside of your project and every time cloud runs up it'll understand what is the description inside of that specific markdown and use that agent if it is the right situation for it to use it and what is really good about this is that you ensure a consistent code base even if you're working with another person in the same project since these files are attached to the project and even in another cloud code instance with another person, they'll understand which are the patterns to use to, to update a specific part of the project. A feature that I believe is very similar to these agents are the GPTs from ChatGPT, where you could basically assign it a specific set of instructions, and it will always use those instructions whenever you ask it to. This is kind of a rough comparison, but you'll see where I'm getting. Uh, Google Gemini also has the feature, it's called Gems, and I use it to help me create the timestamps for my videos. I just send the transcription of my videos, and and then it outputs the timestamps, a description, as well as some suggestions of title and thumbnails text. But every time I want to use this specific gem, I have to go inside of the chat that has that gem. So in ChatGPT, I have to come over to its specific GPT, type in what I want, and have that created. Imagine if I didn't have to do all this, and rather just inside of the normal ChatGPT, I could type in, hey, create a caption for me. It understands that it has to create that, it understands that it has an agent to do that, and goes over and just uses this interface. That is basically what these agents are doing. And yeah, it's already done. I'm already running it to see if it ran smoothly. Everything is running just fine. And it has everything that I needed. So Prisma is installed. My .m.example that I like to have right here is as I want it. My package.json shows that Next.js was installed in the latest version as well as all of my other dependencies. So yeah, that's Cloud Code Agents. If this video helped you at all, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.